uh, venue for our board exam here in Region 8. Okay, so uh, the physician uh, licensure examination was also done here in RTR um, Gymnatorium in Tacloban. And also this uh, board exam for medical technologies. So uh, we are glad that uh, we already have a testing center here in the region. Okay. Then second is that we still have no laboratory after this one. Uh, so laboratory will about respiratory histology will be done next Thursday. So this will be your um, um, last lecture for the semester. And for the Thursday, that will be your last uh, uh, laboratory for histology next <laughs> Thursday as we end our um, first semester, okay? So I guess everybody is excited to have um, uh, your uh, semestral break, okay? Virtual <laughs> semestral break. <laughs> Virtual na naman, no? So let's hope and pray that We'll have already the vaccine so that we can have our face-to-face, uh, -face, no? So anyway, I will be starting my lecture now. Okay, can you see now my um, PowerPoint? Yes, doctor. Okay, thank you. So the topic for today is about the histology of the respiratory system. Okay. So what will be the learning objectives for this lecture? So I guess number one, so we will have to know the basic components of the parts of the respiratory system, meaning the conducting and the respiratory portions of the respiratory system, and describe the distinctive structural features of each component related to particular functions in respiration. Number two, know the types of cells present in the respiratory epithelium and their functions in respirations. Okay. Number three, be able to identify the trachea, bronchi, terminal bronchioles, respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, and alveoli of the respiratory tract on the basis of epithelial cell types present, and the relative amounts of glands, cartilage, smooth muscles, and connective tissue fibers present in the wall of the tubes. And lastly, be able to name the cellular and structural elements that form the blood-air barrier. Okay, so these are the four important learning objectives that we need to meet uh, after this lecture. Okay, so number one, let's go to the major functions of the respiratory system. So what are the major functions? Okay. So number one is air conditioning. So uh, air conditioning, uh, we mean that this involves in the air warming of the, of the air that we breathe, humidifying and filtering, okay? Another major function is oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange, okay? So you know that up to the uh, respiratory system level, there is an exchange of the oxygen and carbon dioxide, okay? But aside from the two major functions, there are also uh, minor functions of the respiratory system. Number one is the perception of smell, okay? Uh, number two, phonation. Number three, the endocrine function. Okay, the endocrine function is uh, involved because there's a, a conversion of your angiotensin 1 to 2, which happens in the lung. So, kaya mayroon siyang endocrine functions. Okay? Then, what are the divisions or the classification of the respiratory system? 
So there are two main portion, no, the conducting and the respiratory portion. So conducting is from the nose up to the primary to terminal bronchioles. Primary or the terminal bronchioles. So from nose yan, up to the primary or the terminal bronchioles. Whereas the respiratory portion is madali lang, no? Kasi respiratory bronchioles, meaning we're already in the respiratory portion, respiratory bronchioles, the alveolar ducts, and the alveoli. Okay, so we will go to this one by one. So, aside from the conducting portion, this is also known as the upper respiratory tract. No? So you have an upper respiratory tract, whereas um, the... Below the larynx, this is your lower respiratory tract. Okay? Clear? So, conducting portion, respiratory portion. Upper respiratory tract, lower respiratory tract. Okay? So, what's the function of the conducting portion? So, conduction nga eh, no? So, conduction of air. So, this is a passageway which carry the air, okay? Whereas the respiratory portion, so meaning you're in the deepest part now. So you, they are involved in the exchange, exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide, okay? So for the histology portion, uh, they are made up of the following, no? epithelium, the lamina propria, submucosa, plus some cartilage and smooth muscle. Depends on the parts of the respiratory tract. Okay? So, there are variations of this. So, but commonly, ito ang common components nila. So, as I have said, it depends on the, the level or the part of the respiratory tract or the respiratory portion or the conducting portion of your, our respiratory system. Okay? Next is we have what we call a respiratory epithelium. So please take note with this because we will be keep on repeating of the respiratory epithelium. So what is respiratory epithelium? Okay? So these lines from the trachea up to the bronchi. Okay? So from trachea up to the bronchus or bronchi. So this is what we call the respiratory epithelium. So what is the other name of respiratory epithelium? If we will recall our topics or lecture in histology. Pseudostratified epithelium. epithelium. To the stratified columnar epithelium with cilia. goblet cells and cilia. O, kulang, dapat kumpleto. No? So, respiratory epithelium, uh, the other name is pseudostratified columnar epithelium with goblet cells and cilia. So, you can see here the goblet cells, di ba? So, this, there is pseudostratification. You can see the columnar cells. You can see the cilia and you can see the goblet cell. So this is a pseudostratified columnar epithelium with goblet cells and cilia. Or ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium with goblet cells or respiratory epithelium. Okay. So let's us go to the components. Ano ang nanjan na mga cells sa respiratory epithelium? Okay, so an answer na natin. Respiratory epithelium is also known as, as I have said, no? So, what are the components of the respiratory epithelium? So, there are a um, cast of characters, no? That are present in our respiratory epithelium. Okay. Number one is the ciliated cells. Okay. So, looking back at this picture, so you can see here, your ciliated cells. It's one of the components. Okay? So, here pala mayroon. No? 
So cilia are present in this columnar cells. Uh, in one columnar cell, ha, take note, in one columnar cell, there are about 300 cilia. Okay? Um, there are, uh, they move in 14 cycles and propel mucus at 2 centimeters per minute. So that's how powerful our cilia is and how they are also very important in our respiratory um, linings. Okay? So remember, if you are a smoker or if you are exposed to um, uh, environmental hazards that can erode or that can uh, make these cells die, so imagine mo, wala nang magmumove, no? Ng mga mucus mo, ng mga particles that are present there because ang cilia ang nagmumove niyan. So take note also that cilia beat in one direction. So para silang first year med, no? Mababait sila. So pag sinabing to the left, to the left, no? Isa lang isang movement lang in one direction. So that's towards your oropharynx in which they will propel the mucus and particulates to re remove it and until he spit it out more or you have to swallow it. So mayroon silang rhythm. Mayroon silang movement. Mayroon silang timing, no? Ang mga cilia na yan. So, pag wala ka ng mga cilia, walang protection, walang magpo-propel ng mga mucus mo or foreign bodies, it will lead into respiratory infections. Okay? So, the second component are your goblet cells. So, I know you're already familiar with your goblet cells. So they are they appear as empty. Okay, they appear as empty because they contain mucin, mucinous materials. Okay. Then the third component, we have the brush cells. Okay. So the brush cells are columnar cell with short blunt microvilli on the apical surface, and they're involved in the sensory receptor. So, si columnar cell din sila na mayroong cilia on the apical surface and they are involved more on the sensory receptor. Okay. Next are your basal short cells. So, by the term alone, basal, so they are located in the basal portion. So, this, they are located in the base of the epithelium and they're involved in the stem cell function. So meaning, they give rise to these columnar cells. So they are the basal short cells. Okay? Then, the last part are your Kolchitsky cells. Your Kolchitsky cells. So your Kolchitsky cells are difficult to look under ordinary uh, microscope, but they are located in the basal portion and they have a lot of granules. So they are uh, granulated basal cells located in the basal portion, and they are involved in the neuroendocrine function. So that's why, no, diba, um, one of the minor function of uh, the respiratory system is neuroendocrine. And this is more common in neonates and adults. No? As you, but as you grow older, nawawala na ang mga basal cells with granules or your Kolchitsky cells. Okay. So from this diagram, this is an ultrastructure of the respiratory epithelium. So let us identify. No? So this one, naklaro ang mga cilia, matataas ang cilia. These are your columnar cells with ciliated columnar cells. Okay. How about this one na maliliit, no? ang cilia? They are called the brush cells. Okay? Then, this one is the goblet cell. Goblet. So, they have the mucin-producing uh, cells, mucin cells present here. Okay? Let's look at the basal portion. Okay? In the basal portion, we have the basal cell, the short basal cell. Okay? And the one with granules are your Kolchitsky cell. Okay? 
So your Kolchitsky cells, they're the endocrine cells believed to produce also calcitonin and serotonin in the respiratory epithelium, okay? So let's go now to the individual portions of the uh, respiratory system. So let's start first with the conducting portion. So under conducting portion, we have the nose and the nasal cavity. Okay, so ang ilong. So ang ilong ng mga Pinoy, no? So the nose is the only externally visible part of the respiratory system. So it has the tip. So this is the tip of your nose and attached to the forehead by the root or the bridge. So dito tayo nagkakaiba-iba <laughs> sa root or the bridge ng nose na yan. No? And it has two openings. Okay? This is the anterior or the external nares or nostrils and bounded laterally by the ala or ale and medially by the nasal septum. So may ala ka in the right, may ala ka in the left. Then the middle portion is the nasal septum. Okay. So if you examine the nose, no? So there are three conche or concha. Okay. We have the superior concha, we have the middle concha, and the inferior concha. Okay? And of course, there are the nasal bone, and the concha are also known as the turbinates. Okay? The turbinates. So the, the, the function is to increase surface area and turbulent flow. Okay? So there are also uh, three portions. We have the vestibular portion, the respiratory portion, and the um, vestibular portion. Okay. So the vestibular portion is located inside the nostrils. So uh, immediately after the nostrils is your vestibular portion. Siyempre, skin pa man. So it is lined by stratified squamous keratinized. But the posterior portion of that, there's a different type of epithelium. There's a transition into respiratory type, okay? So the vestibular portion is cons consists of bebrisae, meaning the hairs, no? The hair present there, the sebaceous glands, the sweat glands, the hyaline cartilage, and the cancellus or the spongy bone. The next portion is the respiratory portion of the nasal cavity. So of the three portion, this is the largest part. Okay? Respiratory type of lining, two parts. No? The epithelium and the lamina propria. Okay? Siyempre, respiratory portion na yan, lined by a respiratory type of epithelium. And the lamina propria, take note here, they are very rich in neurovascular supply. And they have what we call the swell bodies. The swell bodies extensive vascular system for countercurrent flow to your warm air. Okay? So in the respiratory portion, there are many seromucinous glands. No? They produce watery secretions and abundant lymphoid elements. Okay? So this is the lining ileum. Okay, of the respiratory portion of the nasal cavity. And look at the lamina propria, very vascular. And there is a bone, a nasal bone. Okay, then these are your bodies, mga bodies yan. This is what we call the uh, swell bodies. Okay, the third portion of the nasal cavity is the olfactory this is the neural component of the nasal cavity no? and this is the smallest portion and the apex of each nasal cavity then there is a different epithelium here kasi more a neural naman ito so connected to the brain so there is now an olfactory epithelium so special type of epithelium so there are also receptors here and if you look at the lamina propria, this is a highly vascularized connective tissue with lymphoid element. So it's the same as the respiratory portion, ang kanyang histologic picture. 
kaya lang magkaiba na ng olfact magkaiba na ng epithelium same sila ng lamina propria because highly vascularized pero ang olfactory portion walang cell bodies okay so that's why an application no in covid-19 so this is an olfactory epithelium so different kinds of as uh, this is specialized form of epithelium kasi may pagka neural ito so connected to the brain okay so that's why so in application no in the covid-19 so there is a loss of smell and the loss of taste so because affected ang mga respiratory type of epithelium ng nose natin okay kaya pag may problem ang nose may problem din ang taste because of the uh, receptors no interpretation okay so the summary of the nasal cavity it is divided into three portion the nasal respiratory and olfactory portion okay so the nasal vestibule is the dilated space inside the nostril so kaya sa nasal portion pa lang siya yung nasa labas so syempre the line epitheliums are stratified squamous keratinized no whereas uh, no this is the example no stratified squamous then a lot of glands whereas in your respiratory portion the largest part line epithelium nag shift na no? dito stratified squamous then as you go deeper nagiging respiratory epithelium na yan okay so yan na so look at the respiratory epithelium the pseudo stratified na then as we go into olfactory portion okay nagchi-change na rin ang lining epithelium which is now an olfactory uh, type of epithelium or specialized form of epithelium okay so you can see uh, our nose is parang isa lang yan pero if you look at the microscopic pattern there's really a characteristic uh, differentiation so we can identify if it is a nasal portion we can identify if it is a respiratory portion of the nasal cavity or we can identify if this is an olfactory portion of the nasal cavity by looking at the lining epithelium okay so we are done with the nose and the nasal cavity let's go to the pharynx okay so pharynx is divided into three the naso portion okay, this is called the naso pharynx and the oro in the mouth portion oro naso oro then in the laryngeal portion the laryngo pharynx but they are connected no so naso nasal portion mouth portion and the larynx portion okay so your nasal pharynx is uh, common to both the respiratory and the uh, uh, digestive system okay this is also known as the throat so pag sinabi mo may sore throat ako no so this is a funnel shape and they are flexible at the lateral walls and there are skeletal muscles present here and there are three regions or divisions ito yon yung nasopharynx oral and laryngopharynx okay so how about the mucosa okay so different um regions of the pharynx different lining epithelium then no so so nasopharynx nasal portion this is a respiratory type of epithelium whereas sa oro and laryngo parehas sila stratified squamous non keratinizing okay stratified squamous non keratinizing ang kakaiba lang ang naso kasi na, syempre nasal portion in the respiratory type of epithelium so the characteristic um, histologic features of the pharynx are they have no submucosa they have no muscularis mucosa diretso no mucosa lang then lamina propria na presence of prominent elastic fibers in the lamina propria and in the muscularis layer characteristic presence of skeletal muscles Okay, skeletal muscles and in the oro and laryngopharynx there are scattered lymphoid structures present in the lamina propria but here wala wala sa respiratory type of epithelium okay 
Next, let's go to the larynx. Larynx. Okay. So the larynx connects the nasal and the oropharynx with the trachea. Okay. So the main function of your larynx is air conduction and vocalization. So obstructing passage of ingesta into the trachea during deglutition. No? Pari siyempre, magkaibang pagkain, magkaibang air. So ito ang purpose ng larynx dyan. Okay. So grossly, so you have here the sopraglottis, the glottis, and the subglottis. So you will know this more in your gross anatomy. So this is just an overview. I just want to give you that in the upper portion, we have where the false vocal cords and below is you have the true vocal cords. Okay. So how about the histology of your larynx? Okay. So the line epithelium, dalawang klase ang, ang, ang epithelium. In the upper portion, we have stratified squamous. As you go lower, nagiging respiratory type of epithelium. So there is a shift, no? from stratified squamous to respiratory epithelium. So, in the mucosa, if it is false vocal cords, no, it is a pseudo-stratified, this is a respiratory type of epithelium. Pag true vocal cords, non-keratinizing stratified squamous epithelium. And they have also an intrinsic muscles present. And there are cartilages we have the hyaline type of cartilage present here, okay? So skeletal muscle, skeletal muscle, then we have the mucosa here, okay? Then let's go to the trachea, okay? So trachea is a tube about 10 to 12 centimeters long and two to two to three centimeters in diameter, okay? So what characteristic of trachea in the cross section is C shape, C letter C, okay? C shape siya. Then my cartilage yan. Then wala dito sa bandang ito, okay? Kasi letter C nga. Op ang open type is free of cartilage, okay? So this is an overview of the trachea if you cut it in the cross section. Okay, so what's the lining epithelium? Siyempre, trachea na, so respiratory type. Okay, then if you look at the lamina propria, there are a lot of elastic fibers, glands, lymphatic tissues, and blood vessels. Plus layers of loose connected tissue and mixed glands. Meaning mixed glands, there are zero and mucinous glands. No? So after the mucosa, you have a fibrocartilage layer, which is 15 to 16 to 20, and this is C-shaped, okay? Hyaline type. And after that, you have your adventitia, made up of loose connected tissue, blood vessels, and nerves, okay? Next to the let's go now to the primary bronchi, to the terminal bronchioles. So bronchus to bronchioles. Okay. So this is an overview. Now from trachea, it will divide into principal bronchus. Okay. Secondary, tertiary, and terminal bronchioles. So bronchus yan up to bronchioles before we go to the respiratory bronchioles. Okay. So this is the subdivision. So this is um, from trachea, it will divide into the left and the right bronchus. No? So for example, this is the left primary bronchus. Magi-divide yan into secondary, then into tertiary, then magiging terminal bronchioles yan. Okay? Terminal bronchioles. Then after your terminal bronchioles, magkakaroon ka ng asinus. So the asinus is made up of respiratory bronchioles, the alveolar duct, alveolar sac. So ang tawag nito ay lobule, alveolar lobule. And the whole thing is an asinus or asinai. Okay. So 
the importance here is you must be able to identify or to differentiate if it is a bronchus or a bronchial. So, paano natin differentiate histologically? Okay, so give us a picture which is bronchus and which is bronchial. Okay, so una, titignan natin na may lumen. No? Titignan natin na may lumen kasi ang mga bronchus, they are glandular structures. So glandular structures, mayroon yung lining epithelium, may lumen, then other uh, identifiable histologic features that will differentiate the two. So pag may lumen, tingnan nyo kaagad kasi it may be a bronchus or a bronchial. But how can we differentiate them? Okay. So, based on the size, okay, mas bigger ang bronchus. Okay? Mas bigger ang bronchus. But sometimes, do not based on size. Kasi, paano kung ang kwan na yan, tertiary bronchus. So, may maliit na yan. Mas malapit na siya sa bronchial. So, uh, do not depend on the size. But generally, bronchus or bronchi, is bigger, more than 1 mm, and this one is less than 1 mm. Okay? Then look at the lining epithelium. Kasi pag bronchus, this is a respiratory type of epithelium. Whereas kung bronchial yan, simple columnar epithelium. Okay? Then look at if there are clara cells. So we will know clara cells later. So, uh, clara cells are rare in the bronchus, but clara cells are present in the bronchial. And goblet cells are present in the bronchus, and they are rare in the bronchioles. Okay, how about the walls? So presence of bronchial glands, presence of cartilage, and a thinner smooth muscle. Okay. Whereas in the bronchial, walang bronchial glands, walang cartilage, and Smooth muscle is thicker. Okay. So based on experience, I think the most important histologic thing that will differentiate the two is the presence of cartilage. Okay. So maghanap ka agad. Because whatever will be the size, pag mayroong cartilage, it is a bronchus. Okay. Kasi sometimes hindi define ang mga smooth muscles, hindi define ang mga bronchial glands. So always look for a cartilage. Kasi whatever will be the, the size or the lining epithelium, okay, basta may cartilage, it is a bronchus. Okay, that's a general description. Okay, so another thing uh, that will differentiate your bronchus or bronchi from bronchioles in the mucosa. Okay, so pag the mucosal height is increasing in the bronchus, no? Pa increase yan. Habang dito naman pa decrease, then nag change yung lining epithelium. How about the cilia? Mayroon itong cilia, pero ito nawawala na ang cilia dito. How about the goblet cells? The goblet cells are increasing or mayroon dito naman nawawala na. How about the clara cells? Dito wala ang ito wala naman. So, Kung sa cells naman ang babasihan, look for the clara cells. Kasi presence of clara cells will signify it is the bronchial structure. Okay? So what are clara cells? So clara cells are found in the mucosal cells. So they are non-ciliated columnar cells. They are dome-shaped apical. Okay? May dome-shaped apical apical ends, and they serve as a secretory cells because they are the one who produce the components of the surfactants. Components lang ha? Components of the surfactants. They are also known as the reserve cells because they are believed to replace bronchiolar epithelium after injury. So there are more clara cells in the bronchioles than in the bronchi. Okay. So, um, alam nyo na mag-differentiate, ha? So, we are done already with the conducting portion, meaning the histology of the nose 
up to the histology of the bronchus and terminal bronchioles. Now let us enter into the respiratory portion. So sa respiratory portion naman, so remember, ang ending natin dito ay terminal bronchioles. Then, pagpasok sa respiratory portion, respiratory bronchioles. So how can we differentiate now terminal bronchiole from respiratory bronchiole? Okay, so let's the simplified. <laughs> so what is the blue arrow? What is the red arrow? Any idea? Respiratory bronchial dark and blue. That was red and terminal. Balik tad yata. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Di ba? Balik tad. So, ang blue ang termina. Tingnan mo, mga alveoli na to eh. Mga alveoli na yan. So if you look at, there's a shift of epithelium. So di ba iba ang epithelium dito? Pagpasok niya, nag-iba na rin ang epithelium dito sa red portion. So this is the terminal bronchiole. Terminal kasi wala tayong makitang cartilage, walang mga cartilage. But look at the lining epithelium, parang simple columnar. Then they go in, ang continuity niya nag-shift na. So wala nang, iba ng lining epithelium. So this is your respiratory bronchiole. So this is the uh, upper respiratory tract. Magpunta na ng respiratory tract. Okay, another one. What is the blue and what is the red? Hmm? Red is terminal. And blue is okay, very good. So the red is the terminal bronchiole. So look at the lining epithelium. Columnar, di ba? Pagpasok niya dito ng, na magiging respiratory bronchiole na siya, iba na, no? So there is now a cuboidal lining epithelium, non-ciliated, wala ng mga goblet cells, and take note, may mga alveoli na. So pag makakita ka na ng mga alveoli, respiratory bronchiole na yan. Okay. So, Aside from respiratory bronchioles, so let's go to the alveolar ducts and alveoli. Okay, so this is the normal histology of the respiratory portion, the alveolar portion. You can see a lot of alveoli. Alveoli, alveolus, 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 alveolus. Okay, so the alveolus or the alveoli are very thin. So imagine mo, kailangan manipit. No? Kasi they're involved in the exchange of air. No? Kasi kung makapal yan, makapal, mahirapan ang air makalabas or mahirapan mag-exchange with the carbon dioxide. So the nature really marunong. No? So they really know kung anong ilalagay dyan, ano ang kailangan, kailangan bang makapal, kailangan bang manipis. So that's the importance of knowing it. So we appreciate that in histology. May purpose ang lahat na yan. No? So, hindi siya ilalagay doon kung walang purpose. So, very thin. Very thin. And even though they are very thin, they have also connective tissue. But they are made up of thin elastic. No? Thin elastic uh, and reticular fibers. And the cells, of course, may mga cells yan, may mga nuclei. Not only the cells, no? the, the pneumocytes or the alveolar cells, mayroon ding mga macrophage mayroon ding mga fibroblast. Okay. So, the gas exchange happens here. Okay. So, the most important, I think, function is in the respiratory portion, no? the exchange of gases. So, bakit hindi nagkukulaps no? ang lungs during expiration? Because mayroon tayong surfactant. It helps to reduce the alveolar surface tension. Okay, so this is an one alveolus. Okay, one alveolus. So empty yan, empty ang gitna kasi air ang laman. No? Or carbon dioxide kung may exchange. No? So empty yan. So of course, kailangan may mga blood vessels. Mga blood vessels. Kasi after the exchange, kung kailangan ng oxygen, 
dyan sila papasok sa blood vessels na yan. Then dadalhin na yan ng mga blood hanggang kung saan ang kailangan ng oxygen. So kailangan ng mga blood vessels. Pero ang mga blood vessels na nandito are the smallest type. They are the capillaries. Kasi kung malalaki dito, kung mga thick arteries, medyo mahihirapan naman si lungs, mahihirapan si alveoli. Baka mag-collapse kasi blood vessels pa lang malaki na. So may, may purpose din, maliliit din na mga blood vessels. But even though they are maliit, no, they are small or smallest type of blood vessels, maganda ang kanilang exchange, mabilis ang kanilang exchange and carrying capacity of the oxygen. Okay? Then aside from blood vessels, there are important cells that are present here. Okay? We have the alveolar cells or the pneumocytes type 1. And we have also the pneumocyte or the alveolar type 2 cells here. Okay, the whole thing is an alveolus. Then you can have blood vessels, connected tissue in between. Then the pneumocyte type 1 or the alveolar type 1. And the alveolar type 2 or the pneumocyte type 2. Okay. So type 1 pneumocyte or the alveolar cells are flattened. Okay. Then, the type 2 pneumocytes are here. So, magkakaiba. Malalaman natin kung type 1 yan or type 2 because magkaiba talaga ang shape ng cells nila. Can you see that? Okay, so flattened, medyo cuboidal ito. Okay, ang type 2 pneumocyte. Then, you can see one alveolus. So, walang laman kasi may exchange. So, when we go to pathology, kung may laman ito, there's something else. No? Kung may laman ng fluid, malalaman natin. Kung may laman na blood, nalalaman natin. So kung may laman na mga inflammatory cells, it's, it's already in pathology. Okay? If we will go now to pathology. Okay. So type 1, they are flattened. So they are squamoid or squamoid lining cells. So they cover 90% of your total alveolar surface area. So very thin ang cytoplasm. Okay? So very careful because they don't go cell division, ang type 1 pneumocyte. Whereas type 2, they are cuboidal in lining. And they are more numerous than type 1. And they cover only 10% of the total alveolar surface compared to 90% here. And they are capable of cell division. That's why they are also known as the reserve cells for type 1. Okay? Kasi kung mamatay ito, uh, they believe uh, the type 2 can help produce also a type 1. And they're also involved in the alveolar damage or repair. So they are also type by, by uh, doing hyperplasia. So the dami sila, the dami yan. Para ma, ma repair kung may problem man dito. One thing that's important here is the type 2 pneumocyte or the alveolar cells, they produce surfactant. Okay? So aside from the clara cells, the clara cells are the bronchular components. But in the alveoli, the one who produce the surfactant are your type 2 pneumocytes. Okay? And one um, uh, electron microscopic findings to differentiate type 1 and type 2 the presence of lamellar bodies or the zebra bodies in type 2 pneumocyte. But in type 1, wala siyang lamellar or the zebra bodies. Okay? So, this is the alveoli. So, one ganyan, isang alveolar sac yan. Okay? Alveolar sac, one alveolar sac, one alveolar sac. Conglomeration of different sac is called an alveolar duct. It's an alveolar duct. Okay. Then in between, we have what we call the alveolar pores or the pores of con. They're located in the interalveolar septum, meaning one, one alveoli from one alveoli, meron yang septum. So meron ditong mga pores of con. So anong purpose ng pores of con? The equalized pressure within the alveoli. Para hindi magbubto, hindi, hindi sumabog. So parang equal, equalize, equalization. Okay? They're also known as the interalveolar connections or alveolar pores. 
and they also serve as a bypass to rate the alveoli distal to the blockage. So, for example, my blockage dito sa one alveoli yan, pwede mag bypass through the alveolar pores, bypass road, no? Okay. Aside from alveolar pores, okay, so mga alveolar pores yan, so you can see here, mga pores yan, may mga pores yan. So may purpose din, no? Para hindi siya sumabog. So mayroon ding mga alveolar macrophages. May macrophages din dyan. So or the dust cells. So remember, every day we inhale um, dirty air. So ang purpose naman nito is they clean up. Sila ang sweepers, sila ang street sweepers, ang mga alveolar macrophages. Because ang main function nila is to engulf foreign bodies or foreign substances. No? Kaya mayroon kang sweet street sweepers dito. So these are your interalveolar septum, the pores of cone. Aside from pores of cone, there are also other um, mga pores no? uh, between the bronchule and the alveolar. Bronchule and the alveolar, it's called the canals of Lambert. No? Canals of Lambert or the channels of Lambert. Okay, here. And between interbronchial, meaning bronchus to bronchus, we have the channels of Martin or the canals of Martin. But uh, more popular ang pores of corn. So ito hindi masyado makita. No? So pores of corn. Okay, the last um, concept in the important in the respiratory histology is the BAB or the blood air barrier. So we have also the, the brain blood barrier. We have also the blood air barrier. Okay. So what are the components of the BAB? Okay. Of course, number one is the respiratory epithelium or the alveolar epithelium with surfactant on the surface here. Then we have the basal lamina, okay, and the endothelial cells here, the endothelial cells. So the whole thing is the blood-air barrier, okay? So hindi basta makakapasok. So the oxygen can go out, then the oxygen can go in. So my control dito. So this is what we call the blood-air barrier, okay. Questions? So this is the simplified uh, portion or lecture of the respiratory histology. So in details, you can read your book or uh, reference books or any other books in histology. Any questions? So, wala, no? No questions? So, it's clear to you, no? So, what is important, let us summarize, no? The functions of your respiratory system. Okay? So, siyempre, histology ito, you have to master what is a respiratory epithelium. Kasi sabi ko sa inyo kanina, balik ng balik ang terminology ng respiratory epithelium. So, pag hindi mo alam ang basic ng respiratory epithelium, medyo mahihirapan ka. So, what are the components of your respiratory epithelium? Then, what are the division of your respiratory epithelium, of your respiratory system, I mean? So, we have the conducting portion and the respiratory portion. So, what are the examples? What are, have to wear ang conducting portion? Then, hanggang start din ng respiratory up to end what? Okay, then uh, they are also divided into upper respiratory tract and a lower respiratory tract. Okay, so as you can see, there is a shift of epithelium from upper hanggang papasok na tayo sa respiratory epithelium, nag-iiba yan ang lining epithelium. And as you go also into the respiratory epithelium, may nawawala na iba. Nawawala ang goblet cells. Nawawala ang cartilage. So imagine mo ang alveoli mo kung may cartilage. No? So how can the oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide mag-exchange kung may mga cartilage doon? Diba? 
So may purpose, may reason why are they there, why are not they there. Okay? Then, um, ano pa? So how to differentiate bronchus from bronchule? So yun ang importante sa inyo. No? So given that picture, given the structure, is it a bronchus? Is it a bronchule? So given a picture or morphology, is it a terminal bronchule or it is or is it a respiratory bronchial? So yun ang importante sa inyo, sa level ninyo. Then, be able to know the histology of an alveolus or alveoli. So what are the cells present? Okay. So ano mga cells na nandyan? So able to differentiate type 1, pneumocyte or alveolar cell from type 2, Pneumocyte. So you can see them, no? Then um, differentiate alveolar sac from alveolar duct. Hmm? Then last is you have to know the components of the blood air barrier. So yun lang. So no questions? Okay. So a question here. What is the coverage of the second bi monthly? If kasali pa po yung muscle tissue and nervous tissue, kasi nasali na po sila nung first bi monthly. Thank you, Doc. So the coverage of your uh, second bi monthly is the lecture covered in the second bi monthly. <laughs> so please look at your schedule. So all the topics that belong to the second bi monthly, mayroon yan. Okay. For the laboratory practical exam, only all, the, all only the laboratory is covered by the second by monthly. Diba? So hindi nakasama doon ang epithelium, hindi nakasama doon ang connective tissues. So all the laboratory nang nagfall in the second by monthly, kasama yan sa practical exam. Okay? So, you know, already the coverage. So, I think the coverage is, uh, since this is the last lecture, oh, I will post it in our, um, in a group chat, no? Kung ano ang ating uh, division ng points per lecture. I will post it. Any more questions? So, this is the simplified portion or lecture of the respiratory histology. So, I hope you learned something this afternoon. So, uh, no lab this afternoon, so I will give that lab on Thursday. Kasi may, free, may time pa man kayo, no? That's the last lab for the first semester. And this is the last lecture for the first semester. So, I can see you. Mukhang mga excited mag sem break, no? Mag virtual sem break. <laughs> what is sem break virtual? Ano ba yan? Okay, can I see the faces of those who... Who were not around last time? So, Baldono. Baldono, are you around? Joshua? Joshua. 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 Si Kahilig ang nagpakita. Si Baldono ang sinusomon ko. Uh, anyway, uh, Kahilig, Argyle ba ito? Argyle? Ha? Nakamit Argyle po. Argyle po ito. Okay, Argyle Royce. No? So, Kahilig, Argyle Royce. Yes okay. po ito. Okay. Are you, are you in summer now? Yes po ito. Okay. So, what... Um, Internet provider are you using? I'm using, uh, we're using Globe po, Doc. Like yesterday na wala kasi yung internet, kaya wala ako nung pagtawag, Doc. Okay, ang hilap ng Globe. Ano? Just ko. Yes, ang po. Hilap. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Kahilig. Okay? Yes, po, Doc. Baldono, Joshua, nasaan ka na? Joshua, magpakita ka na sa bolang kristal. Wala, ayaw pa rin ni... 
Joshua, Abueba, Jude, o para lahat daw makita. Wala. Aldaba, Leslie. Nagbo-board exam po. Ay, sorry. Nagbo-board exam si Leslie? Yes po. Okay lang. Yes daw. Okay. So, okay lang. Wala si Leslie. Si Kahilig. Ayan. Miss Katrina Conde Parcero. Kat? Are you around na, Kat? Yes, Doc. O, saan ka na? Ayan. O, di ba? O. So, nakita ka na finally. Pero, I saw you already during interview, no? Pero, I want to see again your face. Okay. Thank you, Kat. O, so, saan ka ngayon? Takloban. 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 Okay. So, what internet provider are you using? PLDT. Okay, man. Okay, man. Ang signal mo. With other subjects. Takloban. Takloban. Ha? Minsan, wala-wala. Oo. Pero, okay, man. Okay, man. Okay. Overall, okay, man. Okay. Thank you, Kat. Thank you. Okay. Ilas yun, Alfredo. Alfred, nasaan ka na? Magpakita ka na sa bolong kristal. Wala? Hello? Hello? Oh, sino ka? Ayan. Alfred, we cannot see you. Alfred po. Oh, Alfred, show your video. Open up your video. Yan. So, are you Elacion? Alfredo? Um, yes, Doc. Okay, from where are you? I'm in Lawanis. I'm in Lawanis, Stern Summer. Ang layo, no? Oo. Ano ang internet provider mo? Um, Globe po, Doc. Globe. Globe, okay. Thank you. Okay. Florencio, Shade. 